Alrighty, folks, we need to talk about CPI. We need to talk about CPI headline, CPI core, month on month, year on year. Taylor, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. This is an exciting week for the economy between CPI and the Federal Reserve announcement about what they're doing with interest rates and what's coming in the future is uh, is got the market on edge a little bit right now. And I think rightfully so. So we get CPI tomorrow morning. There are four numbers that we should all be tracking. I'm going from memory. So if I'm off on any of these, correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. So CPI headline month on month is expected to be zero. CPI headline year on year is expected to fall to 3%. Correct. CPI core month on month, I think was 0.3. And CPI core year on year is expected to be four. Yep. Do I have I those right? right? And what do you think, think of all that? Yeah, I think you're spot on across the board there. That's exactly what I was seeing as well from an expectation okay. standpoint. So when we look at all of those, and let's just assume the experts are right. Mm -hmm. We talked in video number one, what does the Fed do? So here we are. The Fed gets what they want. What does that do to the, the statement and Q&A? Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Um, like I kind of mentioned the, in, in the prior video, I think the market is really expecting inflation to be tame. Right. Even barring the news that came out last week where jobs numbers were pretty darn good, unemployment came down. Yeah. Right. So those are two things that are inflationary drivers. So it'll be interesting to see that, OK, in the month of November, if we had jobs start to pick up again versus where they were in the past, does that bleed through to inflation? The market right now is saying, no, that's not going to be the case. If inflation does continue to trend downward, which lower unemployment doesn't necessarily portray. But if it does continue to trend downward, then the Fed can continue this notion of soft landing coming, which is absolutely what Jerome Powell has been speaking. He said, listen, we've controlled inflation and we've kept the GDP positive, kept it at bay from an economic standpoint, us cruising along. And he will continue to forecast that that's going to be what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, so... Um... Any of those numbers you think are particularly at risk or are you kind of in line with what the, the expectations are? I, I think with the numbers that came out from a jobs perspective last week, um, I think it is at risk in, in totality of the inflationary number. You know, Atlanta, I'm sorry, Atlanta, Cleveland Fed now um, that, that takes a look at GDP or GDP now, I guess it is, is projecting 3.34%. Oh my God, it went up? Oh no! Yeah, inflation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So headline. So right, but but that's year on year. So year on year, the market's expecting three. That is strictly a quantitative analysis, expecting three, three, four. Um, wow. So with that, again, that's just looking at the numbers. Um, but again, some of that stronger jobs information that came out last week pushed that a little higher than it previously was. Yeah, I'm I'm actually checking out the Atlanta Fed. So GDP now for Q4 GDP still has it at one point two. That hasn't changed. One point two. Oh. Yep. Yeah, and that is a meaningful drop, right? You look at GDP oh, yeah. last 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 quarter, we were at five two. Now we're at one two. So um, that says, listen, the economy's slowing, and so that's kind of the other side of the equation. You know, we'll we'll see which of yeah. these qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis, rather, are more accurate. Yeah. So I'm going to go out on a limb, like I always do. I always like to guess, and you know, often disagree with the market. I'm going to guess headline. Get this year on year rounds down to 2.9 we're going to get a two okay. handle yep and that's and, and so that's a, a a de minimis discrepancy but that is a huge psychological discrepancy when you go from the threes to the twos it's like oh boy we are doing work here on inflation it is moving towards that two percent target yeah we get a two nine on the back of friday's print of the job market growing but unemployment going down participation up real wage growth i mean the Fed could, you know, they won't because they'd be idiots to do it. But, dude, soft landing. I mean, come this on. is this is cake eating it to ice cream, whipped cream, yeah. cherry and on losing top. weight. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, yeah, we're growing jobs. We're growing the economy. 
in a massive way. We're coming off of a, a huge inflationary problem, and yet the economy continues to get better. More people continue to be employed, and yet inflation comes down. It's just – it's not logical, but maybe there are some underlying, underpinning things. Structural. Whether it's, AI, yeah. whether it's um, you know, supply chains improving. I, I, I think we got to stop talking about supply chain improvement. That's yeah. got to be done at this point. That can't be the excuse moving forward. Um, but AI is certainly something that is adding productivity to our overall workforce um, and driving efficiency. I don't think it's built in like it will or like the market perceives its ability to drive efficiency in the future, but it is starting. Yeah. So uh, again, uh, you know, I think, you know, again, I don't know why I called 2.9. I called 2.9 a week ago, so I'm just going to stick to it. But let's yep. assume the headline prints 2.9. Yep. What happens to the bond market and the stock market if we print a headline of 2.9? I, I think that's priced. Oh, I really? Priced. Oh, I really do. Okay. I mean, right. you, you look at the market right now and you've seen rates on the 10 year come down 70 basis points, 0.7%. Yeah. That is the market saying that either one, we're going into a recession or two, and they can be the same thing. Inflation sure. problem is, is behind us at this point. And yeah, so that's, what, that's again, they're probably one in the same, but yeah, I think, I think they're both the same. Yeah. I think that's what's happening. But on the other, okay, okay, fair. Okay, so right now, recession is being priced into the bond market. What's being priced in the stock market? One of them's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen a massive tear, a tear in stocks over the past five weeks, right? Since the last Fed meeting, we've yeah. seen about an 11.5% run in the S&P 500. It's been massive. Yeah, I think you shared this in the first video. Do you th really think, the cash balances on the big money players yes could be the win that that's making that happen uh, no not in it's not in the entirety of it okay um but yes that is absolutely a piece of it what happens is at year end i'm telling you what you already know at year end big institutional managers that manage mutual funds that manage hedge funds whatever it may be they have to open up their books and they have to show what holdings they are held at year end on december 31st and right. so with that, they do not want, they do not want a big cash position being known to their investors at year end when the investors look back at the market and say, the s and is up 22% or whatever yeah. it is year to date. They don't want to look wild. like an idiot. Yeah. But it, the, the, the fact is the cash position that we're at on the sidelines was $5.6 trillion just a few weeks ago, which is an all time high. So we know that those big institutional players and retail people, don't get me wrong, oh, yeah. are oh, yeah. sitting on cash. And you look back to the beginning of this year and we were on, you know, quasi shaky economic backdrop and you could sit in cash getting 5%. It seemed like an absolute no brainer until you look at the markets and you go, you know, in the rear view mirror, whoops. hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Whoops. We should have been in stocks or we yeah. should have at least had more exposure to stocks. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I, I assume, you know, this individual, if you don't no big deal, but there's Tom Lee is often paraded around on CNBC yep. as the most bullish analyst. Yeah. He's a perm. Well, I don't, he doesn't like to be called yeah. a perma. Yeah. He's a okay. He's occasionally technically bearish. I mean, I've heard his, his like very short windows. Yep. Um, but he's out talking record highs. He's talking about the cash on the sidelines. He's talking about the feds winning. Um, he was on an island all by himself three months ago, but I'm starting to see more and more people kind of go that direction. And he was right. He was, oh, he right. was no, clearly. Yep. Yep. And, but, but the difference now is, is at the time three months ago, the sentiment was incredibly bearish. Yes. Now the sentiment is incredibly, incredibly bullish. Yes. And so sentiment is a contra indicator, right? Mm. It, you know, you look at you look yeah. at Sir John Templeton's famous comment, bull markets are born in pessimism, grow uh, uh, in skepticism, mature in optimism and die in euphoria. It means mm. that the exact opposite of what the market's feeling actually has a tendency to play out. And when the market's feeling bullish, they have that priced into stocks and therefore, on a forward-looking basis, everyone's happy-go-lucky. The, the risk is more asymmetrically downsided, whereas the risk is more asymmetrically upsided when everyone you know, doesn't want anything to do with stocks. Got it. Got it. So uh, it's funny. I, I actually think if we print a 2-9 Tuesday morning tomorrow, mm -hmm. yep. uh, I got to imagine the opening is just going to rip higher. 
I, I do think that's the case. I do think that if you get a two, again, because there's such a psychological battle between two, nine and 3%, I do think you get a run, but then I think the market goes, Oh boy, wait, we're, we're what, already what are we potentially doing? ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> like what, what are we going to get? Uh, is it going to be seven rate cuts that we're going to get <laughs> next year? And that's what we're going to start pricing in. Um, oh, and, and, and in, in reality, you know, that could happen. Um, but it, it's just funny to see the massive GDP print we saw last quarter, yeah. the jobs gains you see just last week and last month, I guess I should say. And then this quarter, you expect to see this drop off of inflation. Like those things generally don't work in unison. No. So it's no, hard I, to I think agree. that all of them come to fruition at once. So at the end of the day, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think what we're both saying is tomorrow morning is the most important number of the week. It will drive the Fed decision or the the Fed talk track. It will drive market stocks. So what 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 say you? Do you think uh, what do, what do you think we print tomorrow? CPI headline, CPI core. Yeah, I think that it comes in in the threes. So okay. at or above expectations. I tend mm -hmm. to to think that the jobs growth was too strong last month. The retail consumer still tends to be spending. Yes, we did get a reprieve or a continued reprieve from gas prices, but it's not as meaningful as it was in prior months. And therefore, I think that starts to dissipate some. All in all, year end rolling around. I think that, you know, the holiday spending has picked up in my town. I was yeah. jammed up in traffic all weekend. I don't know that that's, you know, that's so stupid to say because it's so, you know, hyper focused. But nonetheless, Year end comes, people spend. I think that yep. uh, inflation probably, you know, uh, pretends higher. Very, very cool. Well, where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments. We're on both Instagram and TikTok. We put out daily 60 second videos. Very good, man. Thanks again.